great, and I really look forward to looking at that film of yours. Um, talking about discovering your niche, um, I, I come from a background in graphic design, but I do a lot of experiential work. And I really wanted to have some sort of really profound answer for why I'm in this field, but of the honest truth is, I just love making stuff. And so today I'm going to show you some of my work and talk about my philosophy as a person and as a designer. And a lot of that has to do with this notion of the unexpected. I believe that everything we do, walk, talk, eat, sleep, follows a very logical pattern. And that's input, energy, and output. For example, when we talk, Input is subject matter. Uh, it could be a question. How was your day today? And so the energy is the thought process of the events that have occurred during that time frame, which leads to the outcome being the day was good or bad. Now my interest specifically lies in the unexpected outcomes that are created due to human input. And I'll elaborate on, on that throughout this talk. And I want to start with this short video clip. <laughs> Why it was so amusing? The, the scene was set in such a rigid, controlled environment with its every move calculated. It's like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But when it's when you, the time is when it grabs our attention, is when it starts breaking away from that routine. When he starts to do these unpredictable, with his unpredictable reactions. And things that start to become out of the ordinary. That brings me back to this notion of the unexpected. It is something that is surprising. It is something that is out of the ordinary. And for me, it's something that brings joy. Now, I work in an industry of consumer experience and changing consumer behavior. But I take a very experimental approach towards it. The key to my practice is people. I study human behavior and create activations that allow human input to determine the final outcome. Now as designers, and it doesn't matter which field you're in, advertising, architecture, product, our job is to find ways to best communicate a message. But as technology, and the minds of people are evolving. So is the practice of design. Now it's not about just slapping a message on a board. It's more about how you do it. And in order to do so, you have to understand the mindset of our generation. We are a generation of control freaks with Google in our back pocket. And I say we because I'm part of this generation. I need to know everything all the time. And I need to do things on my own terms. Hence, I'm the designer and the consumer. So as a consumer, I want that sense of authority and I want to know that my actions matter. And then by default, as a designer, I have to give up some of that control and make the use a part of the making process. And so, my role as a designer becomes that of a facilitator. So I become the middle person between the people and the final outcome. 
And so how do you do that? How do you break into a person's routine and give them that sense of authority? And Google is a great example for that. They're constantly trying to find new, unexpected ways of seeing and receiving uh, information, like they're doing with Google Glasses. It's a concept that is breaking away from the one-dimensional experience of looking into a screen, but still catering to our personal needs, still personalizing our experience, and giving us that sense of control. And so my challenge as a, is to find that right balance between me being a designer and letting go of that control for the user to determine the final outcome. And I'm going to show you three pieces of my work. And uh, the key to each activation is human input or people uh, with very unexpected outcomes because of that. This first project is called the Motion Capture Machine. And I did this while I was still at Yale. And it was, the agenda here was to visualize movement in a specific space. And two, to create an obstacle and see how people respond to it. And so what we did was we created a structure with 96 markers hanging from the ceiling. And the mark, tips of the marker touched a piece of paper on the ground like so. And we placed it in places like in front of the doorway, so people had no choice but to walk through it. And it allowed us to capture movement in, in that environment. And that's a little video. actually won an AIG award uh, in Boston. And uh, if you look at the final outcomes, each one is different from the other. And each one is an artifact that captures a moment in time in a particular space. If you look at the last two pieces, there's a clear distinction between the one right at the bottom at times of rush hour and at times where there's no movement whatsoever. Now, this kind of work became the premise of what I do now. Setting up systems, but letting go of the full control of the final product. But even though if the final uh, outcomes are very organic, the thought process is actually very logical. A plus B plus X equals Y. Where X is the human variant, and Y, y is the final product. So in this case, X was when you walk, the people walking in, and Y was the artifacts that were created in the end. Now, human, humans are very unpredictable. And it's their very nature of being unpredictable that gives the element of surprise. This next project, Isolated Community Relief Experience, is part of something to do with that. It's a site-specific specific project. The problem here was not enough people were using the space. And so our question was, how do we bring people in it? The people who were coming there were mostly uh, taking breaks from their workstation, coming out to smoke and vent and just complain about work. So it had a very negative vibe to it. And so it got us thinking. How many times at work or at university do you get so frustrated that you just want to step outside and just scream your lungs out? And so that's exactly what we did. We carried a soundproof box. And the idea behind it was mm -hmm. you walk in, your voice goes into the mic, it gets decoded, and becomes sound on the outside that other people can enjoy. 
I'm going to show you some short documentation and everything is real time. the box. there was actually no, there wasn't a camera inside and we had asked some of the people who had gone in to reenact what they had done but again the human factor over here the x factor over here was the the unexpected outcomes was the sound being created on the outside now that started a long quest for me to question where does sound stand in terms of communication um, because if you think about it, the best way we communicate is through talking. Or we show appreciation by clapping. And then the ultimate question was, is there a way to visualize sound? Can we see sound? And just around that time, I started working at Ogilvy. And one of my first briefs there was to create a mechanism that allowed people uh, to come together, m uh, music, paint, and put the idea of blending. And that was the best brief I could have ever gotten. So I went ahead and I started playing and made a machine that visualized sound. I'm going to show you the prototype first and then see, show you how it got developed. It's called the Art of Sound. That was the machine. I made it out of things that I found around the house. I destroyed my coffee cup in the process. Um, and there was a little drawer I found uh, in the corridor with the speaker I found at some warehouse and I just attached my laptop to it. And what it allows you to do is play any, any kind of sound and it reads the vibrations. So the paper goes over the speaker and the paint comes from the top. Those were some of the strips that were created. I'm going to show you a short video of the proposal. That that these brushes begin to start dancing and start capturing the energy of the songs. So something like Prodigy that is very loud and crazy has no variation in it whatsoever. It's something like the one in the center. And a piece of jazz becomes very expressive, something like in the one at the bottom. Uh, this is what it looks like now. It's a movable unit, and it can be attached to a live band. 
so you can uh, create visual pieces, art pieces of this by a live band playing right next to it. You can attach a DJ booth to it. Or you can go up to it yourself, attach your smartphone to it, and create a piece of art for yourself on your favorite piece of music. Thank you. The, I'm going to show you a short sneak peek of how it's functioning. There are like six uh, compartments of color, and the ink flows through into the paintbrushes. <laughs> next week at the Fashion Forward event in Dubai. So if you're there, go check it out and maybe you can pick a piece for yourself. Um, in the end, um, I would just like to say I work like I live my life. And that's of a facilitator. Uh, I set up opportunities where people's interactions determine the outcome. Things that I have no control over and things that surprise me just as much they would surprise the user. And that's my message to you. Find the unexpected in you, in you and surprise yourself. I hope you enjoyed the work. Thank you very much.